Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this morph effect. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways to make this particular effect. But just before we move on, I will be launching module seven, which is my new travel effects section of my motion effects pro course within the next two weeks. Now, as soon as that launches, I'll be putting a post out across social media. So look out for that. And if you wanna see a full breakdown of what's gonna be included included in that extra module, then you can go onto the product page, which I've also put a link to that in the description below, and you can see a full list of all the videos that are gonna be included in that. Over in After Effects, I've got my two clips here. Now these two clips can be whatever you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my clip here and just right click, create a new composition. So I've got my composition laid out here on the timeline. And then we need to overlay this statue over the top. So whatever your second clip is, you can just overlay it over the top. Now at the moment, what I'm going to do is because they're both moving, I need to just freeze frame them. So I'm just going to make sure that they're both set to freeze frame. I'm gonna freeze frame this one back here at the start. So we've got two freeze frame clips. Now you don't have to freeze frame your clips and all that would be required is when you draw the mask, you'd have to animate that mask to follow, essentially rotoscope the object out of your moving video. In this particular tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to freeze frame it here at the start because it's gonna simplify this process a lot and make it a lot easier for me to show you the steps involved. So what I need to do is I need to line these up so they sit over the top of each other. So I'm gonna grab my top lay here, scale in. By hitting S on the keyboard, I can scale that up. I'm also gonna hit T and bring down the opacity so I can better line them up. So they're not obviously gonna sit perfectly over the top of each other, but I'm just trying to line them up as best I can. And I can keep switching back and forth on my opacity to make sure that we're kind of getting them roughly in that same sort of spot here. So maybe something like that. So they're pretty close, close enough that we can use as a starting point. Now I'm just gonna drag my statue layer underneath this layer here so I can work on this image first. The first thing is I need to draw a mask around this shot. So this is gonna be my first shot. Now I'm just gonna draw a rough mask. Now for yours, because this is going to be your final effect, you want to spend the extra time making sure that you're drawing a nice clean mask around your object. Now this is where the freeze frame is going to come into effect. Because we freeze frame these two clips, it means that we're not going to have to animate that mask. Now if you don't want to freeze frame, you want to have it animating over video, then what you're going to have to do is animate that mask. So you're gonna to have to create a mask path keyframe or use the tracker over here to track that mask onto your shot. So now that we've got our cutout of our person here, you can see that they're not quite lined up, right? So we've got our first mask. Now what I want to do is draw a second mask, which sits around my statue. So what I'm going to do is grab my pen tool again, and this time I'm drawing a mask which follows the outline of my statue layer, right? So I'm making sure that I'm following the statue and not my original person, because this is the layer that I want it to sort of follow here. So I'm just getting a rough sort of mask to follow that line of whatever you want the shape that it's going to morph into. This is where I'm going to do that, right? So now if I just turn on that layer by scaling up the opacity, we should have two masks like this. Now the first morphing effect that we're going to use is called the reshape tool and it's built into After Effects. I can come over here to my effects and presets and just search for the reshape distort tool and just drag that onto that layer. Now up here, I want to set my source mask to be my first mask, which is this one here. You can see it's highlighted in red. And I want the destination mask to be the second mask. So I'm saying I want you to move from my first to my second mask. Now when I change the percentage here, you can see that it morphs those shapes. And what I can do is come down here and create a keyframe for that percentage. I want to start at zero and then move across and scale that up to 100. 
So that's going to get that shift between those two points. I can speed this up by dragging them closer together. And you can see we're getting that shift between those two layers. Now it looks distorted and that's okay because we're going to hide this layer by the statue layer over the top. So now we've got our first layer on top that has the reshape applied to it. I now want to take that bottom layer and move it to the top and do the exact same thing. Because as you can see, this transition kind of works, but it's not great. It looks distorted. And that's mainly because the back layer is not really following that. So we want to try and help soften out that transition by having the back layer also animate. So I'm going to leave my back layer here, duplicate it, bring it up. And then I want to start by drawing a mask which goes around the outline of my statue. So we've just done the exact same thing for our layer underneath, but this time we're now repeating this but for our statue layer. So I've got that first mask drawn there. Now I'm just gonna turn down the opacity and I want to draw the same thing we did before. So I want to draw another mask which follows the outline of my person, which is the outline before it starts animating. So this is before the morph effect is applied to that second layer. And then I can also apply the reshape tool to that statue layer. I can set my source mask as mask one and set this to be source two. Now, when I play through the percentage change, you can see we're getting this weird distortion and I want to show you why this is happening. Firstly, we need to come down to the second mask, which I can access by hitting M on my keyboard. I want to change this to be none. So I don't want to see that second mask. I just want to use it as a position for the first mask to move into. And I'm also just going to change this to be smooth. I can also do the same with my person layer. If I come down, hit M on the keyboard to bring up those masks and also change that to be smooth. Then I want to start animating this. I need to hit U on the keyboard to bring up those keyframes. I want to line my playhead up and create a percentage change here. I'm gonna drag this all the way to 100 and then drag this down to zero. The other thing you can do if you zoom in here, you've got this little gray line. This is the line which is telling it how you want it to animate across. So that'll help just straighten out those two points. So now I've got this effect happening here. I want the top layer to be fading on at a different rate. So what I do is I come down here and hit T on my top layer to bring up the opacity. I'm going to hit create a capacity, opacity keyframe there and then fade this off. And then one here, the one at the start, I'm just gonna fade this one off because I want this to kind of fade on as it's transitioning across. For the second layer, which is the layer underneath, I want to do the same thing. But for this one, I want it to be fading off. I'm also just going to bring this one across just to set that delay to be slightly less so that we kind of get that morphing effect happening like this. I can even increase this by hitting U on the keyboard. I can bring up all those keyframes, bring those in. That's going to speed up that overall transition. I can make all of these easy E's. And then we have that transition there. Another thing I did was I also applied a color effect to the top layer to help it match to the statue. So to do that, I came up to effect down to color correction and added the Lumetri color. I created a keyframe here of the temperature and also one here for the contrast. I just went across double tapped you on the keyboard to bring up those keyframes, created two more here at the end. And what I did was I brought the contrast down and the temperature up. And what that does, it gives it a little bit of a color transition fade to kind of bring that layer in to match more with that statue layer in the back. So we get more of that transition that we're kind of going for there. I can hit U to bring up all those keyframes and I can make any final adjustments. I might just bring up these 
I'll just bring up this fade slightly quicker here and maybe bring all these keyframes in here to speed up that transition. So we get that final transition. Another couple of things I did in my original composition, one which is not part of this tutorial was I did this folding effect over the top. To simply do that, all I did was I basically selected those layers, made them 3D and then animated them moving out. Basically, if I bring up those keyframes, you can see I created a position keyframe to sort of have it animating or sliding out of position. So I created a mask going around this background scene here and then it kind of breaks away. It just made for an interesting effect here at the beginning. And one other thing I did was I also added a rotation. So to do that, I created a null and then I parented all of those layers underneath to that null. And to that null, I then just applied a simple scale and rotation and that gave it that sort of just that made it a bit more interesting to make it look like the camera's moving over the scene. Now, if you wanted to, again, have it animate in from video then into this effect and out, you don't have to use the freeze frame effect, but you'd have to animate or move your masks so that it follows that statue or the layer before on that video layer. If you didn't do that, what you'd have to do is then you'd have to take that layer, duplicate it, go to the freeze frame and unfreeze it. Then you could basically drag this in and line it up. So it transitions from video then into the freeze frame and out again. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is only one way to do this particular effect. And I just want to show you very quickly some other ways that you can do this. This way here, I've just used a very simple mesh warp effect. So what I've done is I've put my two layers over the top of each other like we did before. So I've just got two freeze frames. Then I just came up here and searched for the mesh tool and added the mesh warp to that layer. And then with that mesh warp, what I did is I scaled up the rows. And then you can basically, if I hit U, you can create basically a keyframe from where you want to start that animation. And then you can just drag in on these mesh points. And these will basically distort the layer underneath. If I just drag up the opacity so we can see what I'm doing. As I'm dragging in on these points, it's distorting that layer. So you can see exactly what it's doing there. And it's recording that as a distortion mesh point, which will then animate over the top. So this is another way you could do it. This method's slightly more time consuming but you could get really good results depending on the clips that you're using. The other thing to keep in mind is also apply that same mesh warp to the layer underneath. So like we did before, if you only animate one layer, like we did with the reshape tool, it just doesn't look anywhere near as good. So if you have both layers that are being affected, it just makes the effect look so much better. So that's something you wanna keep in mind there. Another way that I've just quickly put together here is by using the time warp. Now something to know with the time warp is it'll affect everything in that image. So where we had this example here before, we only wanted to affect a part of this image. This won't do that, it'll affect everything. Unless you created a mask, pre-composed that and applied that effect, you could do it that way. But this generally is gonna get better results if you're using a full frame. So in this case where I've got two people's faces, it work, it'll work reasonably well. So I've just got two images here that I've overlaid over the top of each other, one transition straight over the top. And then what I've done is I've just pre-composed those into its own layer and applied the time warp. Now what you've got to do with the time warp is you basically want to scale up the global smoothness and the, and the local smoothness and you can adjust the speed by dragging it right down and that's going to basically drag out that length of transition. It doesn't seem quite right, but that's how it works. You slow it down essentially to get a longer transition. Also note that it's good to keep this layer right here at the very start. So keep the transition only a couple of frames in. So if you're having issues where you can't see that effect, that's why make sure those two layers are right next to each other. And these are the settings in here you wanna mess around with. What I did was I just basically played through here and you can mess around by dragging up and down on these and it'll start to mess around with the different results. 
So you'll start to get drastically different results as you're scaling these up and down. The other thing you can do is also mess around with the green, red, and blue weights. I found that for this particular shot, the blue seemed to have the most effect. So that was the ones that I messed around with. But again, just mess around with that because some of these settings will give you quite a distorted look. So you just wanna kind of mess around with it until you get something that you're happy with and then go with that. So there you go, guys. There's three different ways in making these morph transitions. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.